Hello there, YouTube. I got something a little different to show today uh, in the comic book related area. You see, I collect original art uh, from comic books. You know, nothing too expensive because I'm not rich, but I get some stuff here and there. I've picked up things over the years. And this is something I got this week off of eBay. And it's color guides to the backup story in the ninth, early 80s book, Iraq, Son of Thunder, number 10. And I don't know if you guys know what color guides are, but they're actually hand-painted with usually, in these days it was Dr. Martin's colored dyes. So if you flip on the back, you can see the dye is often bled through or... You can see the patterns and brush strokes in the dyes there. And these are pretty neat things because they due to the age of computerization, they don't make these anymore. Or this isn't how they color anymore, because uh as you can see from uh you can see all the numbers and stuff on the sides here, those are the color codes. And what would happen was the you know, DC Comics who had the original art would uh, photocopy the original art onto this. This paper is not quite photo, not quite photocopy paper. It's a little thicker. Oops, let me see if I can give you a sense of what that paper is. It's a little thicker than uh, photocopy paper, so it can handle the watercolors. And then the colorist would get uh, dyes or sort of something like this. This is the set of inks. It's a little different than the Dr. Martin's dyes, but it's, but it's similar to it. And then they'd get a brush, sort of like this, and they'd brush on the color. You know, they'd dip their brush in whatever, uh, whatever yellow they had for there, and they'd color it in. And then after they colored it in so they could see what it looked like, they'd write down these codes so that the color separator would know what color they meant. Like if you can see here, YR3, that's yellow and red 3. I think they got, they got more percentages over time, but I think red 3 is like a 75% yellow. I, think, I mean, 75% red. I think there was like a 25% red, 50% uh, red and a 75% red, and then straight red, so that which would be 100%. So if you can see oh, that pink sky is Y3R3. So that's I think that's 75% yellow and 75% red. But it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, like I said, they're all hand-colored. But I have to look up who the colorist is, too, because I don't... It's the backup story. And though I used to have the first 20 or so issues of a rack, I bought them off the shelf. I mean, I bought them off the rack uh, in the early 80s. I don't have them any longer because I didn't really like the comic that much. It was a little boring. It should have been up my alley because I like historical stuff, and a rack was a historical fiction thing. Uh, but I, you know, bought it for, I remember it was in high school when it came out, and I bought it for a couple of years, and it was just okay. But I, I, if you're looking for some sort of original art to collect, this is an interesting form of it. Nice dragon there. Uh, because like I said, stuff, which again, you can tell by the bleed through, that it's not a print or something like that. Um... Like I said, they haven't, there haven't been color guides like this since sometime in the late 90s. Once everything got computerized, there was no need for the colorist to make a color guide and then send it to the separator who then, I think they did hand separations in these days, meaning they, meaning they cut with uh, some sort of exacto knife out of film and pasted it down on some sort of acetate. I forget the exact method. Um, but now, the instead, you know, this is all done on screen. This is all done by computer and then sent right to the printer. You can see all, oops, 
all the different numbers. YR2B2. That's 100% yellow, 50% red, and 50% blue, I think it is. In the 90s, they had more percentages, so you'd, you'd do, you know, Y50 would be 50% blue, and Y80 would be 80%, I mean, 80% yellow, and 80%, and 50% yellow, but I, guess, I think there was, only, there was less variation in the colors for these ones. But these seven pages only cost me 20 bucks. I, got, I was the only one bidding on them on eBay, so the price never went up. So, I mean, I, I think they're interesting because, like I said, you can't get them anymore. Color guides like this don't exist, and they're actually hand-painted, though the, you know, they're just photocopies of the original inks. The colorist actually hand-painted the ink on there to guide, to, to, to guide the separator. And I think it's a neat thing. I'll add them to my original art collection. One thing about these two is, like I said, they're, I think they were often done in Dr. Martin's dyes, which isn't a light fast medium, which means over time they'll fade if exposed to too much light. So I'm going to take these and, you know, put them in. I usually, when I have small pieces of individual art like this, I'll put them in mylar. Comic, just, you know, regular comic book mylar bag with backing boards in them so I can pick up and handle them easier and keep them out of the light. I'll put them in a box somewhere and take them out and look at them when I want to. Like I said, this, is, this was a fairly cheap way to get some, to add to my original art collection, uh, which is the only way I ever, I just noticed it says, whoops, a rack number nine on there. I was, uh, it must have been, because the, the auction said a rack number ten, and I looked it up in the story said, uh, found, you know, I looked up, though it didn't have the credits, it had, you know, Frozen Hell for a Viking, Rack number 10, backup story. So they m must have originally been scheduled for 9, and then ran in 10. But there's an interesting little piece of comic book history for you. You can occasionally, you can occasionally see these things pop up on eBay. Sometimes they're... If it's, a, of course, a popular comic, they're way more expensive than $20 for seven pages. But for a comic that's pretty well forgotten, uh, you can get them for fairly cheap. All right. So have a uh, good day out there, YouTube.